Let's get scratching. Graffiti has been a mainstay of American culture since the late 1960s. Pioneers like Daryl McRae, better known by his nickname, Cornbread, started tagging his nickname onto walls around Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His friends and other individuals picked up on this, and by the late 1970s, the movement spread to New York City. Tagging spots now extended to the subway system. This would be the dawn of modern railroad graffiti. Tagging the railroads has been around since the 1800s in a technical sense. Railroad workers would write cargo information on rail cars. Unsolicited tagging first began during the Great Depression with hobos. The man often first credited with railroad graffiti is James Herbert McKinley. He worked for the San Antonio, Uvalde, and Gulf Railroad, later becoming part of the Missouri Pacific. Around 1919, he would begin drawing a character he created known as Bozo Texino on the sides of rail cars. Bozo wore a large hat and smoked a pipe. McKinley remained mostly anonymous, separated from his creation as railroad workers relayed the story of who Bozo Texino was like a game of telephone. He works out at Coors the Brewery in Golden, Colorado. Bozo was a car man that quit smoking out of Lafayette, I believe, Lafayette, Louisiana. He signed his name on the side of the boxcars, but he's a railroad worker. He became something of a supposed living mystery man. McKinley remarked to a reporter in 1939 that he had tagged a quarter of a million cars with Bozo. McKinley's work would go on to inspire a line of graffiti monikers in decades to come. J. H. McKinley would pass away in Pleasanton, Texas on February 26, 1967, just before the modern graffiti movement would start to take hold. Urban decline became an issue at large across American cities in the late 1960s into the 70s. Manufacturing, automotive, and other jobs were moving elsewhere. The new graffiti writing and art movement was really taking off, especially in New York City. Tagging had progressed from walls to the Metropolitan Transportation Authority subway train cars, inside and out. <laughs> don't understand what's going on here. Taki 183 and Tracy 168 were two popular early graffitiists in the area, the latter of which popularized the wild style form. Tagging subway cars meant their work could be seen all across the city by hundreds of thousands, even millions of people. Graffiti artists would try to outdo each other, making their tags more complex and larger in size. These unkempt subway trains contributed to a feeling of lawlessness as some citizens felt unsafe in America's largest city. Mayor John Lindsay declared war against graffiti in 1972, but this didn't really stop anyone, assuming they weren't caught. The city did not have enough dedicated police resources to stop the movement. The MTA erected fences around rail yards for the time being, and red paint would be applied to cover graffiti. This new paint was seen as a fresh canvas to artists and writers, as designs on subway trains became even more complex. Almost every car on the system had some form of graffiti. Drawings of people, characters, and even landscapes were sprayed onto trains. Bombings would occur where artists would tag as many train cars as possible in a short time span using more simplistic tags. The art often stayed on the trains for quite some time, as due to a city budget crisis in 1975, the MTA was unable to do any maintenance like repairs or cleaning. People would be tagging trains day and night, and nothing was really done to stop it. Entire cars, including windows, would be covered in what was known as a whole car or a whole train. This continued throughout the 1980s as photographers and news stations documented the newly colored trains. In 1981, the MTA painted a handful of their cars with a white, graffiti-resistant paint. But it didn't help much. By the mid-80s, the graffiti movement and subway system were at a breaking point, art and name tag overlap were common, and the subway was in abysmal condition. Trains were breaking down, they had defective doors and lights, and graffiti covered destination signs. The New York State Legislature declared a transit emergency, and extra funding would be granted to the MTA to provide much needed maintenance and cleaning to their cars. New York City Transit Authority President David L. Gunn ordered that trains would be scrubbed of graffiti. 
Also part of the clean train movement was any cars with new graffiti were to be immediately taken out of service. Security was strengthened as well. By 1989, the New York Transit Authority reported that subway trains were graffiti free. With taggers kicked from the subway trains, they now turned to the tunnels. The city's graffiti had inspired the creation of new artists across the country. However, not every city had an accessible transit network like New York, so people began turning to freight trains instead. I like it, I like it! Modern graffiti on freight trains began in the 1970s, also in New York. Writers on their way to the subway would come across a freight train and sometimes leave a quick tag. It wouldn't be until the late 1980s that small amounts of freight train tagging started to appear, finally taking off in the late 90s and 2000s. Writers like Is The Wiz and Zephyr are credited with popularizing the act of tagging freight trains. Railroad graffiti in general around this time was becoming popular on a global scale. Graffiti crews were established in large American cities. Artists looking to spread their work on trains bound for everywhere in the US, Canada, and Mexico. With freight cars often sitting much longer than subway trains, artists and writers have especially been able to experiment and refine their style. Some even devote 25 to 30 cans of spray paint to create freight versions of whole cars. Freight railroads were quick to combat this new trend by stamping over art. This was because it often covered up important car information like ID numbers, the owner name, and dimension and weight limit numbers. Decades have passed since graffiti made a name for itself, and nothing has really changed. This trend, on the other hand, has led to the street art movement. Illegally tagging trains is still as common as ever though, even the New York City subway still falling victim to it. Artists use trains as a canvas for expression, exposure, and creativity, allowing their pieces to be viewed for free all across a country. In the end, the fight against graffiti will likely never end for the railroads. <laughs>